Cumple tus objetivos con el inglés. Un año de inglés con el apoyo de los mejores tutores online. Apúntate en curso de inglés online tv.com y por menos de un euro al día. Hello, welcome again. Okay, listen to this sentence. If you don't try, you'll never know. If you don't try, you'll never know. Literalmente, si no intenta, intentas, nunca sabrás. Claro, en castellano probablemente diríais, si no lo intentas, nunca sabrás el desenlace o el posible resultado. Pero en inglés sobran, nos sobran it y estas cosas, estas partículas. If you don't try, you'll never know. Contracción you'll, you will, you'll. Rima con tira para acá, pull. You'll pull, I'll push and you'll pull. If you don't try, no digáis nunca try it. Porque try it es probarlo, catarlo, saborearlo. Es diferente. Intentarlo es simplemente try. Try es hacer un esfuerzo. Try. If you don't try, you'll never know. You'll never know. Sí, hay que arriesgarse para saber. If you don't try, you'll never know. Y bienvenidos a la clase 181. Ahora vamos a ver la frase. If you don't try, you'll never know. Si no la pruebas, nunca lo sabrás. Y ahora nos centraremos en la primera parte de la frase. If you don't. Aquí tenemos otra primer condicional. Sí, hemos estado estudiando esta forma de hablar en condicional. La, el primer condicional que tenemos aquí. If más Presente, porque if más will no podemos hacer. Jamás metemos if más will en una oración. If I go, por ejemplo, siempre en presente. If I eat, if I win the lottery. Y luego, en la siguiente oración, sí va la condicional que es will. If I win the lottery, I will be rich, por ejemplo. Entonces, aquí tenemos una, una negación, una negación. If You don't. Entonces, aquí sí, no, en este caso, pruebas. If you don't, try. If you don't study, I'll be angry. Si no estudias, estaré muy enfadada. What a busy day. Y todavía me queda limpiar el pasillo. Oh. A ver, puede ser peligroso si no se usa guantes. Can be dangerous if you don't use gloves. Well, I need to find my... Wait a minute! Can be dangerous if you don't use gloves. What a mess! Esto es fatal. No se dice if you don't. Se dice if you don't. If you don't use gloves. Esto hay que corregirlo, eh? No se puede estar así. Si no, la gente no va a entender. If you don't... Y lo subrayo. And I'm going to underline that. Bien. Tú puedes pronunciarlo bien. If you don't. Can be dangerous if you don't use gloves. Eso es. It can be dangerous if you don't use gloves. Ahora está bien. Uh, if they don't write this well, people can't understand them. My God. And if you don't write it well, people don't clean properly. And then I can't do my job. That's right. If they don't write directions clearly, people don't know what to do. Jeez, I swear, my work here is never finished. Ahora vamos con la segunda parte de la frase. Y es el verbo to try. Fíjate en la pronunciación. Es try con la R suave. Try, try. ¿Y qué significa try? Bueno, tiene dos significados. Puede ser o probar, por ejemplo, prueba esta tarta. Try this cake. O también significa intentar. Por ejemplo, intentaré hacerlo mañana. I'll try to do it tomorrow. Intentaré hacerlo mañana. I'll try to do it. Con el infinitivo aquí. I'll try to do it. También se puede usar con el gerundio. Pero aquí nos centramos en el infinitivo. I'll try to do it. I'll try to be Brave. La palabra del día, sí. Brave. Valiente. La pronunciación es muy importante. Brave. Brave no. Brave. Muy bien. Entonces, otra vez. I'll try to be brave. Intentaré ser valiente. Perfecto. Well, tr 
try restarting the computer. You try, okay. Try restarting it again, then call me back. Okay, bye-bye. Sometimes there are problems with computers and I don't know what they are. So I have to try different things. You have to try different alternatives, try different solutions. To try, intentar, to try, try, try. That's right, you have to try different things. Now I'm working on a problem with the server. It's very complicated. So I have to try, well, I tried resetting the computer. Of course, that's the logical thing, but I also tried entering into the files through a different system. Doesn't seem to be working. I'm gonna try looking at the backup system. If I try that, maybe I'll find a solution. The key is to keep trying. If you don't find a solution the first time, you have to try. Keep trying. Try hard. Keep trying new ways and you'll find a solution. I'm sure I will. Hemos visto la primera oración con if más presente simple, porque como acuerdas, no decimos if más will. If you don't try en este caso, si no lo pruebas, if you don't, con presente simple. Pero aquí tenemos la segunda oración y si sí metemos will. If you don't try, you'll never know. You will, contraído, you'll never know. Nunca lo sabrás. Nunca es never. Muy bien. You'll never know. No con una K muda. No. You'll never know. You'll never know. Muy bien. Y ahora vamos a ver más ejemplos con esta estructura. You'll never know. If you don't go. Nunca, nunca lo sabrás si no vayas. You'll never know if you don't go. Si no vas. Muy bien. Entonces, you'll never know if you don't see him. Nunca lo sabrás si no lo ves. Muy bien. Ahora vamos a ver toda la frase. If you don't try. Do not. Contraído. If you don't try. Y no if you will don't try. No. Or if you won't try. If you don't try, you'll never know. Go on. Try it. Estoy solicitando un nuevo empleo para ser una guía turística, a tourist guide. Mm -hmm. Creo que vale la pena intentar. I mean, come on. If you don't try, you'll never know. Eso, si no lo intentas, nunca sabrás. You'll never know. Come on, say it with me. You'll never know if you don't try. Well... Ya sé que estoy en el trabajo aquí, but I'm going to do it now anyway. Mr. Fernandez will never know, okay? Okay, let's see the questions. Experiencia en el turismo. Hmm. Alto. Hi. They'll never know. Empleo actual. Um, tourist guide. Tourist guide. They'll never know. Una recomendación de tu jefe actual. Hmm, yes. I can write it. They'll never know. Firma de tu jefe actual. Hmm, well, yes. Shh, he'll never know. Idioma nativo? Hmm, Spanish. They'll never know. Hello again. Okay, are you ready? Hmm? Are you ready? Okay, the sentence is the following. A lot of people, mucha gente, a lot of people have been asking for a days off recently. A lot of people have been asking for, mucha gente ha estado pidiendo, curiosamente, días libres, librarse, en días laborales, últimamente, recently, lately, recently. Lately siempre exige el presente perfecto. Have been asking. For. Recently, también, casi siempre. A lot of people have been asking for days off. Recently. A lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people, mucha gente. ¿Cuántas veces en la vida decimos, uy, mucha gente, cree, mucha gente, mucha gente? Pues memorizar, a lot of people. A lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of people have been asking for. Pedir is to ask for. 
En este caso, están pidiendo días libres, el vicio de pedir. Yeah. A lot of people have been asking for, a lot of people have been, o sea, llevan tiempo pidiendo últimamente. A lot of people have been asking for days off recently. <música> Hola, bienvenidos a la clase número 181. Y hoy la frase es A lot of people have been asking for days off recently. Que en español es Mucha gente ha pedido o ha estado pidiendo días libres últimamente. Vamos con la primera parte. Have been asking. Han estado pidiendo. Ahora, aquí tenemos el present perfect continuous. Recuerda que en la clase 178 la vimos, ¿verdad? Y teníamos la estructura have or has been más el verbo principal en gerundio. Has been asking o en plural aquí have been asking. Vamos a ver que people siempre, siempre se dice en plural. Ojo que jamás decimos people has been asking. Uf, nunca. People are. No people is, sino people are. Por lo tanto, aquí, people have been asking. Bien, vamos con algunos ejemplos. Her dogs have been barking non-stop. Y aquí tenemos la palabra del día, non-stop, sin parar. Y por último, the people in the meeting room haven't been drinking my coffee. Muy bien, nos vemos en un minuto. Another one. You know, a lot of people have been emailing me and calling me about a job in this office. Yet they've been calling all morning, they've been sending me emails. Hello, Steve speaking, how can I help? Well, you know, there are no jobs here, okay? Thanks, bye. Mucha gente ha estado llamando. A lot of people have been calling about a job. A lot of people have been calling this office about a job. I don't understand. Why have a lot of people been calling and emailing about a job? Look, another one. I don't know anything about a job. Why are all these people calling about a job that I know nothing about? Wait a minute. Anna and James. Well, and, and Susan as well. A lot of people have been talking about changes in the office. Yeah, a lot of people have been saying that Mr. Pilgrim wants to reorganize the office. Could it be? All these people, have they been calling about my job? Bien, vamos con la segunda parte de la frase de hoy, que es asking for, es decir, el verbo to ask for, que es pedir. Ahora, to ask for también se puede decir request, pero es un poco formal. En inglés del día a día decimos to ask for. Ahora, cuidado que siempre nos tenemos que acordar de decir for, to ask for something, ¿vale? Cuando pedimos algo. No decimos I ask a thing, uf, no, sino I ask for a thing, I ask for Something. Vamos a ver algunos ejemplos. I want to ask for a new chair. This one's very uncomfortable. Ahora, cuidado también con ask. 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 Marca bien la K. Can I ask for a drink? ¿Puedo pedir una bebida? They've been asking for that report all day. Llevan pidiendo ese informe todo el día. She's been asking for a new printer since hers broke down. Muy bien, nos vemos en la siguiente clase. Hi, welcome to the shop that sells everything you need, when you need it, wherever you need it. Well, a lot of people have been asking me for the latest K-Phone 5000. They've been asking for it for a few weeks. Yeah, everybody's been asking for the phone. And I've been trying really hard to get it. And guess what? I got it! Yeah, that's right, I got the phone. Everybody's been asking for it for a few weeks, and finally, I got it. You heard me correctly. Everybody's been asking for it. Pedir algo, to ask for something. 
Yeah, everybody's been asking for the phone. And I've been asking mi proveedor, my supplier, I've been asking my supplier to deliver these phones for quite some time. And finally, they've arrived. But everybody's been asking for it, and it's only 200 euros. April's been asking for it too. So if you want a phone, you need to come here and buy it now because everybody's asking for it. Bien, vamos con la última parte de la frase de hoy, que es recently, últimamente. Ahora, cuidado con la pronunciación de recently, que no es recently, sino recently. Recently. Repite conmigo. Recently. Muy bien. Ahora, normalmente lo usamos con tiempos perfectos. I've been there recently. I've been doing my work recently. Ahora, vamos con algunos ejemplos. Have you seen her recently? No, I haven't seen her recently. He's been working non-stop recently. ¿Te acuerdas la palabra del día? Non-stop, sin parar. Muy bien. What have you recently been doing? También lo podemos poner delante. What have you recently been doing? Otro ejemplo más. ¿Cómo se dice en inglés? No he ido al gimnasio últimamente. A ver. Muy bien. I haven't gone to the gym recently. Muy bien. Nos vemos en la siguiente clase. Oh, this is going to be wonderful. This is going to be a masterpiece. You see, recently I've been drawing the human form, the human figure. You see, recently I've been going to classes to learn how to master the human form. Recently I've been practicing this style a lot. That's right, we say recently. Recently. Recently I've been practicing, so recently I've been improving a lot. Just like you with your English, right? Yeah, now here, also Desiree, he's been going to the classes as well. So recently, he's been drawing a lot of figures. Now, Pierre has been going to the classes a lot as well, and he's been drawing a lot of figures. Actually, Pierre has also been the model. So I've been drawing a lot of figures, a lot of sketches of Pierre recently. I think that looks a lot like Pierre. I think I've been looking at Pierre a lot recently. It's a little strange, but I think recently my art has been getting a lot better. Hello again, welcome back. Okay, listen to the sentence in view of, in vista de, a la luz de, in view of, in view of, a la vista de, in vista de, in view of everything that's gone on, in view of everything that's gone on, in view of everything that has gone on. What's going on? ¿Qué pasa aquí? What's going on? What's going on? Y este es el presente perfecto. En vista de todo lo que ha pasado. In view of everything that has gone on. In view of everything that's gone on. I think it'd be best to call it off. Creo que sería mejor. Lo mejor sería aplazarlo. O posponerlo o cancelarlo. To call it off. Mejor cancelarlo. To call it off. I think it'd be best. It'd be. It'd be. It would. La contracción que vais a oír en boca de nativos es it'd be. I think it'd be better to call it off. O bien, I think, I think it'd be best. I think it'd be best to call it off. Vale, better y best, curiosamente, en este caso. In view of the what's going on. Yes. again and welcome to a new sentence. Yes, every day a new sentence. And the sentence is the following. Listen. In, in view of everything that's gone on, I think it'd be best to call it off. In view of everything that's gone on, I think it'd be best to call it off. In view of, en vista de todo lo que ha pasado o hasta el desarrollo de todo al final. In view of, in view of, in view of everything that's gone on. To go on is to happen. I think it would be best, sería lo mejor uh, cancelarlo todo, no? I think it would be best to call it off, to call it off, in view of, in view of what's gone on, in view of. In view of the importance of English, 
I recommend that you make a special effort. In view of the current circumstances, I believe we should work very hard. In view of the current recession, I think our only alternative is to persevere and to be optimistic and never, never lose faith in view of the current recession, in view of everything, in view of, in view of. Man, I've been reflecting a lot lately. Yeah, well, many, many years working in this profession, in the service industry, and many, many years working here at this hotel. And in view of everything, I think it's time to move on. Seguir hacia adelante. I think it's time to move on in view of everything, in vista de todo. In view of uh, the, 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 the financial figures, they're not very good. Yeah, in view of the, the treatment here at the hotel, in view of everything, everything that's happening, I think it's best for me to, to go to another hotel. But I don't know how to tell Harriet because I like Harriet and, and I like my team, but in view of everything, in vista de todo, I... I think it's time, yeah, in view of everything. In vista de todo, view, vista, es igual. Yeah, a veces son iguales las frases. In view, pero lo que quiero es que lo pronuncies bien. No quiero view. Sí, seguro que lo has dicho alguna vez. View no se dice en inglés. No es palabra. View no. View, esos dientes tocando aquí el labio de abajo. View, in view of everything, in view of everything. Dilo. In view of everything, I think I have to move on. Oh, well. Okay, welcome back. Part two of our sentence. In view of everything that's gone on, in view of everything that's gone on, I think it'd be best to call it off. En vista de todo lo que ha pasado, ha ocurrido, el desarrollo que ha habido de los acontecimientos... Uh, de hasta el momento, creo que sería mejor pues cancelarlo todo, eh? to call it off, to call everything off. In view of everything that has gone on, to go on, to go on. Hey, hey you, hey, what's going on? ¿Qué, qué, ¿Ese barrullo que hay en tu habitación? ¿Qué pasa aquí? Eh? What's going on here? What's going on? What's going on? Otra palabra, otra canción. What's going on? What to go on means ocurrir. ¿Qué está desarrollándose? ¿Qué está pasando? What's going on? Y en vista de todo lo que ha pasado, in view of everything that has gone on. Contracción, in view of everything that's gone on. And the word of the day, caderas, hips. H-I-P, hip, one hip, two hip, uh, the other hip, two hips. Los hippies también tienen caderas. The hippies have hips, my hips. Hey, hey. how's it going? You know, I'm thinking about applying to be the manager of this hotel. Yep. I mean, in view of everything that's gone on between Harriet and the staff, I think the hotel really needs a new manager. Yeah? In view of everything that's gone on between Harriet and the staff, I think they need a, a new, younger manager. What do you think? In view of everything that's gone on in the hotel, do you think this hotel needs a new manager? That's right, we say to go on. In view of the things that's gone on in this hotel. There's always something going on in this hotel. But really, in view of everything that's gone on between Harriet and the staff, I think it's time she left. Imagine, imagine what it would be like if I were the manager of this hotel. All female staff, I could open the bar until really late. I could meet a lot of beautiful girls. Yeah, a lot of interesting things could go on if I were the manager. Anyway, what do you think? In view of everything that's gone on between Harriet and the staff, do you think I should apply for the position? All right, here we are for part three of our sentence. In view of everything that's gone on, in view of everything that has gone on, or that has happened, I think it'd be best to call it off. Se entiende que van a cancelar algo. No sé lo que es ese algo. Dicen call it off. It que es una reunión, una fiesta. In view of everything that's gone on, 
I think it'd be best to call it off. I think it'd be best, it'd be best, it'd be best, it'd be best. Estoy haciendo la contracción, lo siento. De it would. I think, creo que sería lo mejor, sería mejor. Cancelarlo todo. I think it would be best to call it off, to cancel it. It would be best or it would be better. Hay un debate en el mundo habla inglés si se dice better aquí o best. Um, los dos nos valen. I think it'd be. Los nativos dicen it'd. It apostrofe de, que es imposible para los no angloparlantes reproducir. Así que digáis it would. Pero vais a oír it'd. Así que escuchad. I think it'd be best to call it off. I think it'd be better to call it off. It'd be best. Another day, another problem. This time, I've had to call off Margaret's suspension. Yeah, even though I believe in it, I've had to call it off. In view of all of the recent problems, I thought it best to call it off. Repeat it with me at home. I thought it best to call it off. We don't say to call off it, to call it off. It's not the first time I've called off a suspension. In the past, I've called off suspensions before, but that was because the employees were threatening to take me to court. But this time, I called off Margaret's suspension because I'm a good and a decent person. What? You don't believe me that I'm a good and a decent person? Of course I'm a good and a decent person. What other managers do you know who would call off a suspension? I mean, my manager friends don't even call off meetings. But I had to call off Margaret's suspension. I mean, I believe in the suspension, but we need her help here in the hotel. Because, well, with George not working as hard as he should be because of his operation, we need all of the staff. So the best thing I could do was to call off Margaret's suspension. Cumple tus objetivos con el inglés. Un año de inglés con el apoyo de los mejores tutores online. Apúntate en cursodeinglesonlinetve.com y por menos de un euro al día.